Good morning and welcome to Falkirk Vineyard. We are so delighted that you are here with us. Yeah, we think you've made a great choice to spend your Sunday morning with <laughs> us. Whoever you are, wherever you're watching from and whoever you're watching with, we hope that this morning is going to be an oasis of hope and peace in the middle of all that's going on at the moment. Our service is going to last about the length of an episode of your favourite TV show. So we know that you're going to be able to hang out with us and join in for the next hour. In fact, I think you hear someone at the back saying this is their new favourite TV show. And this morning, we are going to be led in worship by Elena and Matthew. And then Andrew and Jasmine will be telling us about a few things that are going on over the next couple of weeks. After that, Pastor Andrew will speak to us about what's been going on at Falkirk Vineyard for the last couple of months, where we are now, and he'll give us a little glimpse of the future. And we'll also hear from Pete Costello, who is the chair of our trustees. And we'll finish the service with some more worship and a chance for you to receive ministry and prayer. Yeah, in fact, if you want prayer at any time during the service, then please just click the live prayer button and a chat window will open with one of our prayer team. Before we get started, let's begin by praying to the Lord. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come now. Would you awaken our hearts and our minds? Would you help us to know that you are here? Will you speak to each one of us? Will you transform each one of us? Will you work in each one of us this morning as we join together to worship you and to hear what it is you have to say to us? We love you, Lord, and we trust in you, and we open our lives to you now as we worship. And we pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes. 
saint my gaze transfixed on Jesus face
shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up a mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me Hey everybody, we are Andrew and Jasmine. We are uh, the youth pastors here at Falkirk Vineyard and we have uh, the exciting task of bringing you this week's announcement. So, um, firstly, if you want to give uh, financially to the work of the church, you can do that by uh, checking out falkirkvineyard.com forward slash giving where you've got all the details that you can use um, uh, to do that, I think it's fair to say that the church um, is very much alive, like, like very busy. There's lots of things going on and, and therefore that still takes money. So um, uh, not only that, but you know, the Bible tells us um, to give our tithes and offerings to, to the work of God. So um, I would encourage you, go and check that out. Um, and uh, I believe that you will be, you'll be blessed by doing so. Small groups are on Thursday night. There's only a couple of weeks left that small groups is on. Um, there's still time for you to get signed up. So... Um, Thursday nights, 8pm, um, you can sign up online and youth, uh, you can come along with small too, but ours starts at 7.30 on a Thursday night and you can get a link from us on Instagram if you DM us. Um, so yeah, follow us on our socials. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, one of the things that's kind of close to our heart as the youth pastors is... Um, the National Vineyard Youth Festival. So, uh, called Dreaming the Impossible, normally we would take our young people from P7 to S6 um, away with us to um, to the festival for the weekend. So we typically would have kind of worship, uh, great teaching, a ridiculous number of games, uh, you know, entertainment. And sleep actually just... on, sleep on cold camping floors and have to queue for... Yeah, don't sell it too much. It's great, it's great, right? And, um, we love it. We do, and we've taken our young people there for a, for, the, for a number of years now. So um, this year, you get to sleep on your own bed and you get to have a hot shower yeah. and get to watch it from your living room <laughs> so so uh, this year as jasmine's alluded to it is going to be completely online so 31st of july and the 1st of august we are renaming for one year only um as streaming the impossible so over that two days we will have again teaching worship um some entertainment which is going to be good fun um and a whole bunch of other seminars and stuff that's going on so you can check out dreaming the impossible dot org where you can sign up for the very expensive tickets that are Free. Uh, so check that out. We will have some more details going out to our young people um, about some of the stuff we're going to put around that to help um, get the most out of the experience. Basically, we all want to try and watch it all together. If that means on a social media platform or like we put up a like a huge screen in a field and like watch it all together, how fun would that be? I think that's Jasmine getting carried away. But yeah, we will uh, we'll give you some more details about what that's going to look like in future. Jasmine, what is our final announcement for this week? 
next Sunday. It is communion Sunday, so you need to come with your juice or your wine and bring some bread, and we're all going to take communion together. Yeah. So be ready for that at the start of the service next week. Um, so I think, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that is us. So we're going to hand over to Andrew McNinch, and um, yeah. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Morning, everyone. It's great to be with you again. Can you believe that this is now our 16th week of online services? Yep, 16 times you've been uh, at church in your pyjamas, watching the TV or the laptop or your phone or your tablet uh, as we do church together. And do you know as well that it's now um, four months since we met together physically at the Green Park Centre. The last Sunday we had was on the 15th of March. That's 112 days ago. That's a third of a year. And it seems now that we've been in this situation for so long that it's become our new normal. I mean, I haven't had a haircut since then. My, my new normal is to just keep growing my hair. Um, and I'm badly needing to get it cut because I don't think my hair's been this long since 1987. But if you can remember back in March, um, just before we went into lockdown, about three weeks before lockdown started, we had a Sunday called Vision Sunday, where I delivered a review of Falkirk Vineyard's activities from 2019 and spoke of our plans uh, for 2020. You probably remember it most of all because it was a very long talk. I got into a lot of trouble about that because I went on for a long time. So today I promise you that this will be concise and brief um, because I know you're all busy sitting in your armchairs. So, but little did we know that uh, then that 2020 was going to end up looking a wee bit different uh, from what we thought and what we had planned for. So today, I just want to give you um, an update, like a, a Vision 2020 update from lockdown. And just to have a quick look back at some of the stuff that God's been doing in our church over the past 112 days. Uh, and then towards the end of our time today, um, I just want to have a wee glimpse um, into what may be ahead of us as we start to see the lockdown measures being relaxed. And also, we'll be hearing from our board our board of trustees, well, one, one of them actually, we're going to hear from Pete Costello, who is the chair of our trustees, and he's going to share with us how things stand from the trustees' perspective. But when we came into lockdown back then in March, one of the first casualties for us was baptism. We had planned to baptise three people on the 29th of March, which sadly did not go ahead. Now, other than kitting these three guys out in spacesuits, baptism was never a possibility with COVID-19 around. Um, our next baptism service is still on the calendar. It's due on the 30th of, 30th of August. But we don't anticipate that things um, will be in a place where it's safe to baptise people on that date. However, as soon as it is safe to do so, we will find a way to safely and appropriately baptise you three who have been waiting patiently and hopefully many more. Because as we've been doing our church online, we have had four people press the raise your hand button during our services to indicate that they've given their life to Jesus. And we've seen a guy make a commitment at our Love Falkirk Pantry. And there may be more. We just don't know. Um, we know that there are more people watching our church online um, than were coming to our services at the Green Park Centre. But we don't know who they all are. And we are hoping, we are praying, we are trusting God that people are coming to church, not just to our church, but to other churches online and committing and dedicating and giving their lives over to Jesus. So we pray that in his name. So at the start of lockdown, we changed the Sunday online services straight away and a midweek online service as well with small groups straight after. And before I go any further, I'd just like us to show our appreciation for the incredible work that goes into doing and presenting and to producing church online. And particularly to Kenny, our associate pastor, who from the first minute got to work on how we could do this well, do it efficiently and do it effectively. Going online caused us to implement change very, very quickly. But thankfully, we had Kenny's talent and experience with media to fall back on. 
So Kerry, I knew that film and media studies degree that you got from Stirling Uni was going to come in handy one day. So, but putting together one service takes at least a full day out of Kenny's working week. And that's when everything goes well, when nothing goes wrong. So Kenny, thanks. We really appreciate the monumental effort that you've given and continue to give to make online church happen. And I also want to thank our worship pastor, Ryan. For the first few weeks in lockdown, he, along with Aidan, his son, were knocking out video after video of worship sets, including some new songs that they had recently written. And of course, we've had great blessing from others in our worship team as they have stepped up to lead us into God's presence week after week. And again, this is no small thing. The finished article that we see on a Sunday and on a Thursday that lasts for about 10 minutes can take hours to produce. It can be take after take, frustration after frustration, particularly when we have recordings happening in two different locations. So Ryan and all the worship team, we say thank you. We love you, we honour you, and we bless you. Our first priority when we had to isolate was to work on keeping us all connected and to have continuity in our small groups and FV kids and FV youth. We were also right in the middle of a Freedom in Christ course, which we were determined to see completed so that those who were on that journey saw it through. So we are so grateful to our small group leaders, our Freedom in Christ leaders, our youth pastors, Andrew and Jasmine, and to Rachel, our kids pastor, for keeping the plate spinning as we navigated those early days. Small group Zoom calls, Freedom in Christ on Zoom, F for Youth Live on Instagram, and kids' videos galore kept us together as a church family. And so did the Daily Bread videos that so many of you contributed to. And we even managed to do a connect party on Zoom for, for people who were newer to the church, which was amazing. And I just want to encourage you in one area, guys. We um, still believe that small groups are the best way to get connected into church. They are the best way to ensure that you're part of this community, that you belong uh, and you, you feel that you're part of something. And, and I would just encourage you, if you're not in a small group or maybe you've just attended once or twice through this current term, we've got two weeks left. So why don't you go onto the, the website, falkirtvineyard.com, come forward slash small groups and sign up for the last two weeks of small group because the series we're doing if you haven't been at one before you won't miss out on anything because they're all like kind of standalone discussions so i'd encourage you like just do it just be part of it you know it's not too late we just love everybody getting involved and we're having a blast uh, lorena and i have loved seeing everybody come together on one zoom call you know seeing all your faces getting a bit of chat and banter at the beginning and then we worship, we watch our video talk, and then we break into our small groups to, to discuss what we've heard and to pray together. So guys, get involved. And if you don't know how to get onto Zoom, then contact us at info at falkertvineyard.com and we'll get someone to talk you through how to do that. But regardless of the unprecedented changes we have seen, the mission of the Church of Jesus Christ does not change. And the vision that God has given us has not changed either. When we planted this church six years ago, we captured what the Lord wanted us to be and to do in a couple of sentences. And we wrote this as our vision statement for Falkirk Vineyard. We are a church in the community, serving the community, changing one life at a time. We are a Bible-based church with the aim of training and developing disciples and leaders to extend the kingdom of God. In our church, we want children, young people and adults to worship with passion, hear God's word, be changed by the power of the Holy Spirit, be made welcome, become part of God's family. And we will take Jesus into the community to reach the lost, feed the hungry and heal the broken. That statement still describes what we do as a church. And nowhere is this vision more evident than in Love Falkirk our Compassion Ministry. We rebranded re our Compassion Ministries as Love Falkirk exactly one year ago. But this was much more than a name change or a rebrand or a PR exercise. The renaming to Love Falkirk coincided with the opening of our food pantry in Camlin, 
that saw us provide for, connect with, and build relationship with more people than we had done before. Love Falkirk is led by Blair and Lindsay Henderson, and it is their vision to see lives transformed and rescued from the effects of poverty. And that's what drives them forward to do more. And they also know that the only lasting thing that brings effective change is a heart that turns to Jesus. A few months ago, um, we were probably about six or seven months into uh, after having opened the pantry, and I was chatting to Lindsay, uh, who along with Blair Lee Love Falkirk. And Lindsay was um, just um, contemplating the fact that we, we do great stuff in feeding people, but what more can we do for them? What more can we do to reach them for Jesus? How can we make the pantry uh, and our food provision um, more than just feeding people? Well, how the food pantry has changed during lockdown uh, will answer that question. At our Vision Sunday in March, I showed you this slide that shows um, our food provision from 2018 to 2019. Love Falkirk provided 11,776 meals in 2019, compared to Storehouse in 2018 of 4,536 meals. And we predicted that in 2020, we might double our capacity, and we thought that was a fairly ambitious target um, to set. But how wrong we were. In lockdown, the need amongst families increased dramatically, but it is also the number of single men that we have provided for during, during lockdown that has really surprised us. We are finding middle-aged men that are out of work coming to us, older men with health issues who are, who are retired or are early retired, young guys released from prison um, due to COVID, and guys who are destructively addicted to alcohol and drugs. You know, we've got, had one guy who's been regularly coming to our pantry every week since the start of lockdown. He's in his early 30s. He has addiction issues, and a, and a number of weeks ago, um, we'd just been getting to know him, and he, he and he took a heart attack, and it was all connected to his abuse and his addictions. Thankfully, he's doing okay. He's got medication to kind of keep him going, but you know we are looking at heartbreak and devastation uh, in the eyes of these young men, and we just pray that God will use us and will do something dramatic to change their lives. But in lockdown, this is what um, Love Falkirk now looks like in terms of numbers. Between January and March this year, we were providing for an average of 15 households per week. In lockdown, we are providing for an average of 70 households per week. And before lockdown, we provided on average 300 meals per week. When we say providing meals, we measure that by if we give one a family of one or a household of one um, food for uh, groceries for one week, then that's three meals for seven days, so that's about 20 meals. So we were averaging 300 meals per week before lockdown. And if we had continued that throughout 2020, we would have provided 15,600 meals by the end of this year. However, we have been provided an average of an incredible 2,900 meals per week during lockdown. That means that in the first six months of this year, we have already supplied four times more meals than we provided in the whole of 2019. On Vision Sunday back on the 1st of March, we said that Falkirk Vineyard would focus on being five things. Outward focused, compassionate, generous, servant hearted and doing things well. And our hope is that all these aims describe everything that we do as a church. We are passionately committed to generously blessing those outside of the church with compassion, humility and excellence. So I'm going to hand over to Pete in a second, but I just want to ask you to pray for the community that we have gathered at the food pantry. Broken people, desperate people, hungry people. And would you pray that our volunteers, who are amazing, who show up every week um, to serve um, and to bless uh, the people who come along, would you pray for them that they would get opportunities to pray and speak into the life, into the hopelessness 
um, that we are seeing and are confronted with every week. And also, we have volunteers at Love Falkirk who don't belong to our church, and some of them don't belong to any church. And we want you to pray for them as well, that, that in doing this, in serving Jesus, that they would find Jesus and they would commit their life to him and see their life changed and transformed as well. And we want to continue to pray for revival. When I look at the, the poverty, when I look at the addiction, the brokenness and the hopelessness around um, the area that we serve with the food pantry, my heart breaks. I feel hopeless. I feel like, what can I do? How can I break this? And I know there's only one thing that can do that. And that is a, an almighty move of the Holy Spirit in our town. So guys, will you pray for revival? Will you pray that God will send his spirit and transform uh, lives um, into, into kingdom, to make them kingdom citizens um, that would go on to prosper and have amazing lives and would show others the love of Jesus as well? Finally, I just want to talk about the financial provision that we've received for Love Falkirk. We um, started applying for funding at the start uh, of the lockdown and we have been blessed to have received over £18,000 worth of funding so far during lockdown. God has been incredibly generous um, in his provision for us. And I just want to let you know that Love Falkirk now um, takes no money from church funds, that we are able to entirely fund uh, Love Falkirk from, from outside sources. And we say thank you, God, because we needed that. We needed um, God to provide for us as a church financially. And I'm going to hand over to Pete now, who's going to talk about that in a bit more detail. Good morning. Pete Costello sharing with you this morning. At our most recent board meeting, we were discussing a number of things, including some of the challenges that are facing us right now as a church with regards to our finances. As a body, we felt that we wanted to share that with you, the wider congregation, and Andrew certainly felt that it would be useful for one of the trustees to come and share with him today. And as you can see, it was me who drew the short straw. In a moment, I'd like to share with you two slides. The first slide is looking at our finances as they were a couple of months ago in the past. And the second slide I would like to share with you is looking at our finances as they stand at the moment, the present. And I do that in the hope that together we will begin to shape our financial situation for the future over the next couple of months. So by the power of Kenny's swift hand, we should be looking at the first of those two slides right now. Now this slide was first shown to us back in February as part of Vision Sunday and part of Andrew's talk. For those of you who were there, you may well remember that this slide painted a very bleak picture of our financial situation at the time. It showed very clearly that at the current rate of expenditure, by uh, July, by about now, uh, we would be running out of money, running out of reserves and in, in effect would be insolvent. Now, it was our intention as a Board of Trustees to meet towards the end of March to review the current position on the finances and also to take a steer from what we felt the Lord was saying. But that was all pushed aside like so many things as a result of COVID-19. That meeting got postponed until June. Uh, early in uh, May, uh, during the month of May, Ruth Allen, who is our treasurer at Falkirk Vineyard, reported that she felt we might have some very difficult decisions to make in that up and coming uh, meeting. Uh, and when we say difficult decisions, we are talking about reducing some of our staffing hours and possibly even looking at redundancies. Now, I think it's fair to say on behalf of the Board of Trustees, it was not a meeting that we were particularly looking forward to and certainly a meeting that was full of apprehension and heavy heartedness. However, as that meeting went on, we had a real sense that the Lord was saying something and we felt that rather than Falkirk diminishing, we felt what the Lord was saying to us that Falkirk was to grow and certainly it was to go deeper. As we continue to look at those finances, we also uh, asked Andrew to give us a steer of what he felt was going on within the churches in Falkirk, but also from his uh, wider colleagues and wider network of what they felt was happening within the churches in Scotland. And the more Andrew shared with us, the more we realised that our heavy heartedness and apprehension had begun to evaporate and it was replaced with great excitement and boldness and a great sense of uh, expectation that the Lord was going to do something new.
So shortly after that meeting, Ruth was able to pull together um, a more up-to-date uh, spreadsheet of uh, what our financial position is, and I'd like to share that with you now in the form of slide two. Now, what you can see from slide two is that uh, our financial position that was looking pretty bleak in July has suddenly moved all the way over to April of next year, which is really exciting. Now, it is fair to say that that move is in part to, to do with COVID-19. Uh, we have certainly seen uh, our costs go down dramatically. We're not hiring the hall for Sunday morning services, for instance. Also, ministry expenses have been dramatically reduced because we have been stuck in lockdown. But it would not be fair to put it all down to that. One area where we have seen substantial growth in income is the whole area surrounding La Falkirk. We've seen a dramatic increase in grant giving. We've also seen an abundant supply of uh, stock arriving to bless the many poor and marginalised. And as as we've just heard from Andrew, not only are the poor and marginalised being blessed substantially by the work of that ministry, but equally what we're seeing is that the agencies, the partner agencies that we're working with are also being blessed by that ministry. And we have a Christ-centred ministry gaining great favour within Falkirk Vineyard Council, which is just amazing. So it's important for us to recognise what the Lord has done, and we must give him praise and honour and glory glory for his position. It's very exciting. However, there's always a but. I would be remiss if I did not press upon you that our red line of July has not gone away. It has simply moved to April of next year. Now, personally, I do not see this red line moving uh, some form of God giving us breathing space in order to get our act together or for us to get our, um, our ducks in a row so that we can do church properly. We're doing church properly. It's just that God wants to do more. It's our sense, therefore, as a board of trustees that something different is happening here. Could the Lord be providing this time to enable us to prepare? Is he getting us ready? So it is nine months until April, and it might be coincidence, but as you know, a baby takes nine months to be ready to be born. So is the Lord wanting to birth a new thing within Falkirk Vineyard? The leadership have a sense that, yes, it is what the Lord wants to do, and we certainly support them 100% as a board of trustees. So my question to you is, if that discernment is correct, are you in? Is it something that you are for? It is a genuine question before you rush in to answer that question. I believe the question needs careful consideration. Jesus tells us that it is a wise man who counts the cost before he begins to build the house. So I feel it demands consideration because it is much more in my view than about percentages of giving, which is not something I personally subscribe to anyway, because my understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that he died for all of me. He died for all of me. He did not die for selective parts of me. It was 100%. When I met Jesus for the first time at 19 years old, I was overwhelmed by the love that I felt he had for me. But I also had to take time to weigh the cost of following him. My hopes and dreams would become his. Where I live, play, work would be designed by his hand. What happens to the income that we receive as a family would be for him to spend. And more specifically for me, the bigger challenge, my time would become his to command. You see, my Bible tells me that my Jesus will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But before we get carried away with our amens and hallelujahs and praise the Lord, we need to read the small print. The Great Commission of Jesus Christ in Matthew 28 says that we are to go and make disciples of all nations. And he spoke that not just to the men, but to the women and the children too. We are to go and make disciples of all nations. And Philippians 2 teaches me very powerfully that it is Christ in me that is the hope of glory. And it is Christ in you you that is the hope of glory. You see, Jesus Christ will build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail, but he chooses to do it through you and I. The Lord is looking to build his church and he is looking to build the ministry of Falkirk Vineyard Church. We are certain of that. 
Andrew and Lorraine are fantastic, as you already know, and they have my 100% support. I am totally committed to them and for them, as I am their excellent leadership team. However, they are pretty much maxed out. Short of going without sleep, I'm not sure that they can serve us anymore. So, Falkirk Vineyard family, two slide three, that is yet to be filled in. Is our discernment good? Is the Lord about to birth a new thing within Falkirk? What do you think? If so, are you still in? If your answer to that question is yes, then you need to consider the cost. To reiterate what I have already said, this is much more than about percentages of income. For some of you, it might mean the Lord is going to require you to pray like you have never prayed before, going without your rest and your free time. For others, it may be the cost of sleep because the Lord is going to start to require us to pray around the clock. For others, it's still the cost of opening up our homes, maybe to a new small group, maybe to a lodger to stay for a while. And to others, it will mean going without food as the Lord evolves your prayer life into prayer and fasting for the first time. And yes, of course, for others, a review of our income and our outgoings and expenditures. For those of you who can only afford the widow's might, I say God bless you and thank you for all that you are doing. However, for others of us, for some of us, the call is not about the percentage of our income, but more a test of our faith in his provision for us and for our families. That test of faith may push us way beyond any notions of regular percentages of giving. Saints, we have some time, we have nine months, in fact, to consider what we feel the Lord is asking us to do. Might he be asking of you to give up your car? Might he be asking you to think about a new career? Maybe he is asking of us to share more of our homes, maybe to give up our sleep and to sacrifice our free time. The only thing that we cannot do is to do nothing because April will be upon us in no time at all. And the stark reality of doing nothing is that we will have to stop doing much of what we are doing now. I share this with you not to disturb or to threaten. I share it with you to give you a frank and honest appraisal of where we are at present. So that's about it from me. It, uh, if I may, I would like to just pray for us before I hand us back to Andrew as you consider that. Over to you as our congregation. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, if we are on the wrong track here, we pray that you would correct our path. If we are on the right track, give us boldness to step into the new season. Help us to be honest and weigh the cost before you and then give us the courage to be obedient to your call. Amen. And back to you, Andrew. Thanks, Pete. Lorraine and I really appreciate and value the support that we receive from you and all the trustees. So thank you so much for everything that you do. In recent weeks, we have started to see an easing of restrictions as the impact of COVID-19 seems to be lessening. However, this is still a very dangerous virus and as much as we would love to gather as a full church or in small groups or other gathered settings, we will be acting with caution as we move forward. You may have seen the news um, of a coronavirus outbreak in a church in Bremerhaven in Germany last month. They held a church service in early June where around 150 people were in attendance and it's known that 44 people who attended that service contracted COVID-19 and that a cluster of 112 coronavirus infections and one death was traced back to that church service. Even as restrictions are eased, we will not be rushing back into large gatherings. This week we contacted Falkirk Council uh, and the Centre Manager of Green Park to find out what planning, if any, was in place towards reopening. As things stand, there is no guidance from the Scottish Government or from Falkirk Council on when community centres will reopen. And we also know that schools will not be available for other activities or groups for the foreseeable future. So therefore, we do not see us physically gathering in the foreseeable future. 
Now I know that there are some there's a there's some people who think that this stance exhibits a lack of faith or is kowtowing to governments and earthly authority. Well, two things in response to that. First of all, Jesus said that we should love our neighbour as ourselves. And I believe that this approach aligns us with this foundational message from the Lord. And secondly, in the event that any church goes against government guidelines, although they are only guidelines, they will likely not be covered by our insurance. So if anyone catches COVID-19 at a church event, is subsequently sued and the church is found to not follow guidelines, then the insurance won't pay out. That could ultimately mean that churches would close um, through financial uh, bankruptcy. So we are therefore going to be taking a phased approach to returning to Sunday gatherings by starting small and gradually building things up as things ease back to normal. But this is an opportunity to think about what really matters. This is an opportunity to consider church being shaped very differently. It may be that we never do things exactly as we did before. I find this exciting because this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to start over with a blank page. Now we at Falkirk Vineyard, we are in a good position because we don't have a building. We are mobile and we are nimble to change and we can react quickly if required. But you know, I believe that this is our opportunity to be the church of Jesus Christ wherever we are. And this is your time to be vocal and bold about Jesus, to show that he is in you, that the church is the people of God wherever they are, not only when they are gathered, but when they are scattered. So guys, let's make this the new normal. Don't sit around waiting for things to go back to what they were. You know, let's um, take on board what Peter said in his first letter when he said, instead, you, and when he says you there, that's a singular you, that's not a collective you. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. That is not a corporate thing. That's an individual thing. And I believe that if we do this individually, then we will see a move of God. And finally, will you pray for us? Will you pray for Lorraine and I? This has not been an easy season for us. So much change, so many challenges. But I want you to know that we are focused on doing on what is right before God and to do our best for you. And will you pray for our leadership team and for our trustees as we lean on them for guidance and wisdom? God is at work. We have a God who is more powerful than we can imagine. He is preparing to move by his spirit. He's positioning his people for revival. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that? Let me end with this promise that God gave to Israel in Deuteronomy 11. Now you're probably going to have to go back and read this a few times because the language is quite poetic. But I believe that this promise is as much for today as it was for the Israelites back then. So let's read that. Deuteronomy 11, starting at verse 8. Be careful to obey every command I am giving you today, so you may have strength to go in and take over the land you are about to enter. If you obey, you will enjoy a long life in the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors and to you, their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. For the land you are about to enter and take over is not like the land of Egypt from which you came, where you planted your seed and made irrigation ditches with your foot, as in a vegetable garden. Rather, the land you will soon take over is a land of hills and valleys with plenty of rain, a land that the Lord your God cares for. He watches over it through each season of the year. If you carefully obey the, man, the commands I am giving you today, and if you love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and soul, then he will send the rains in the proper seasons, the early and late rains, so you can bring in your harvests of grain, new wine and olive oil. I firmly believe that God is preparing his people to enter in a new land and a new season like we've never seen before. 
And just like the children of Israel, they were leaving behind a, a land that was godless, but that but they were familiar with and were settled there. And I believe that God is moving us from a godless season where we are settled and we are a part of into something new, something vibrant, something full of life, something that is different, something that will change us and change others. And I am excited about that. I am excited about that. So guys, let's not sit back. Let's think about what God wants us to do today. And let's not worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will take care of itself. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in Him. And lean not on your own understanding, or even the understanding of others. Let's get in with God, and let's move with what He's doing. Amen.
give my all to you, God. Thank you, Elena and Matthew, for the wonderful way you led us into worship this morning. As a church, we always want to be passionate worshippers of God. Yeah, and thank you, Pastor Andrew and Pete, for filling us in on the amazing things God is doing in and through the church. And uh, also for the opportunities that he's got ahead of us. We want to take a moment to wait on the Holy Spirit and see what he wants to do. So don't switch over to Facebook just yet. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to work among us. Yeah, come Holy Spirit, we ask. I just get the sense today that someone has something pain in their hand. Um, yeah, so I just want to, um, to pray for that. I just speak in Jesus name to the pain in, in uh, this person's hand. And um, I just say, be gone in the name of Jesus. I speak healing yes. over the hand. Uh, I um, speak restoration and for the uh, full use to be regained in the hand and for all pain to be gone. And I speak this and pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. I also get the sense as well, um, someone, maybe a few of you just kind of have a sense of, a, of darkness over your life and the Lord, want, I don't know how he's going to do it, but the Lord wants to just kind of shine light on you right now in a way that you, you're going to sense it. So I just ask, Lord, would you come and would you shine light into this darkness? Yes, Lord. Would you help um, whoever this is for, Lord, help them to just feel this right now in themselves that you are shining a light into their lives and that you are bringing hope and joy to them where recently it's felt like there's, there's darkness there. Thank you that you are the light of the world and you are the light of our lives. May Lord, bring that joy and that hope. Yes, God. We just want to give an opportunity as well for you if you um, have been listening this morning and you want to um, join in in this adventure of following Jesus and being part of this church, we want to give you a chance to do that. So if that's you, there's going to be a little button at the bottom that says, I commit my life to Jesus. And uh, we just want to pray. And maybe you just pray after us um, and make this prayer your own um, and give your life to Jesus today and begin a whole new way of living as a follower of Jesus. Let's pray. You pray with me. Lord Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to leave behind the way I've been living. And I want to live in the way that you have promised. I know there are many things that I have done that are not pleasing to your heart. So would you forgive me? And would you change who I am? Give me a new heart and a new mind. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died and rose again. I believe that you paid the price for all of my sin. And I want to live my life with you now and forevermore. Amen. 
if that's you, why don't you click that button that says I commit my life to Jesus. And uh, and also, if you want to talk more about it, then you can also click the little button that says live prayer. And we would love um, to chat with you more. Thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, next week, we're starting a brand new sermon series. So look out for that. Also, if you haven't had a chance yet to see it, our FB Kids video for today is now available. Visit falkirkvineyard.com forward slash kids to watch it. We also want to say a big thank you to Estelle for organizing our online quiz night on Friday. You did a fantastic job and we had so much fun. And thank you to all of you guys who joined in. Um, it's great for us to be together as much as possible during these times. So thank you, Estelle, for making that happen on Friday. Okay, well, that's us for today. Um, we will see you at Small Group on Thursday. Until then, have a great week. Bye. Bye.